for this lesson, we're going to make funny face pumpkin collages. So you can see all the different funny faces and face expressions that I made for these collage examples. Remember, a collage is a work of art where we use paper, scissors, and glue to make it. We're going to start with an orange piece of paper and draw the shape of our pumpkin with a pencil. You are going to decide which way you want to hold your paper. If I hold it vertically, so that is tall, I'm going to get a tall, thin pumpkin, just like this example here. If I turn my paper horizontally, I might get a shorter, wider pumpkin but I do want to fill up all the space I can. So lightly with a pencil, you wanna make sure your pumpkin is as large as you possibly can make it. Fill up all of the paper by trying to make it as high to the top of the paper as you can, over as far as you can. I'm going very close to the bottom of the paper right now. Okay. And it's okay if this shape is not perfect. Remember, all pumpkins are a different shape and size. So yours does not need to look just like mine. I'm gonna show you a tip for cutting out our pumpkin a lot easier. When I use my scissors, I want to open them all the way and then close them slowly. Open all the way and close them slowly. Rather than making tiny little cuts like this, that would take a long time, and it might not be perfectly on the line. But by making sure I open my scissors slowly all the way to the corner, all the way, and closing them, I can cut a much longer line a lot easier. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit here. Once I have my pumpkin all cut out, I do not want to take my scraps and scrunch them into a ball. There's still plenty of room on this paper for scraps for making other collages, so we want to make sure we keep them flat. Then the next important step is writing your name and class code on the back. So you would write your name, and your class code shows me what grade you are in and who your teacher is. After we have our name and class code, we are gonna to wanna to put the pumpkin stem. This is where our scraps come in handy. I can draw the shape out if I want to with a crayon or a pencil, or I could just cut it out. It's up to me. Once I have it cut out, what I wanna do is not glue it to the front, but glue it to the back. I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue towards the bottom of the shape. Now, something that is very important when working with a glue stick is you only want to turn it up a little bit just so the glue is sticking out just a smidge. Don't do this. I don't want to see glue sticks being turned all the way up. That's going to ruin them. So my glue stick, I just have out just a little bit. I don't want to lay it down on top of my artwork and put glue because I might get it all over and I don't want that. That's where my messy mat comes in. I picked up my shape and put it on my messy mat. I can add a little bit of glue just where I need it. Just a little bit at the bottom. I'm then going to pick up that shape and glue it right to the back. So I'm just kind of pressing it back there and then I'll smooth it out with my fingers. It's not gonna fall off. All right, now I have the shape of a pumpkin. What I'm gonna do next is draw what I call curved lines from the top to the bottom. This is gonna help make it look more like a pumpkin, like the ridges of a pumpkin. These are color sticks. Color sticks are one of my favorite art materials to use. They're made by Crayola. It's kind of like a crayon. It works like a colored pencil, but we don't have to sharpen it and we don't have to take the paper off. So I'm going to draw a line from the top of my pumpkin and I'm gonna curve it I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So I'm gonna curve it from the top all 
all the way to the bottom. Make sure you go from the top to the bottom. Leave a little bit of space and do another one. We have about space for one more on this side. On my other side, I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. So this is kind of like a C. All right, just a curved line. All right, that looks a little bit more like a pumpkin. The next step is to start making my silly face. I can make mine look however I want. We're going to be making the eyes, some facial expression lines like eyebrows, or other lines that might be around the mouth. And you're gonna see that all of these pumpkins I made look so different from each other. They all have different face expressions. Some are excited, or maybe a little scary, or a little bit surprised, maybe a little goofy. It's totally up to you how you want to do this. I'm gonna show you how I cut out my shapes and a couple of tips for gluing them down. All right, I'm gonna get everything out of the way. I have small rectangles of black and white paper. This is what I'm going to use to cut out my shapes. I'm gonna start with the eyeballs. You get to choose how many you want. Maybe you want one eyeball, maybe two, maybe even five, I don't know, it's up to you. Something I can do is take my pencil and draw the shapes I know I need and then cut them out. But I'm gonna show you a trick to save some time. Let's not do that. To cut out two shapes exactly the same at the same time, I'm gonna fold my paper a little bit, draw the shape I need. So I want two large ovals. I'm now gonna cut it out while it's closed. Take my time, cut out this shape. Save those scraps, I can still use them. All right, there's still plenty of paper here. But I have two eyes exactly the same. I'm not gonna glue them down yet though because I might wanna move them around a couple times. So put my glue to the side. I'm gonna glue everything down at the end. We're gonna think of a nose shape. Look at all the different noses I made. This one's just silly nostrils. Just a curved line to make it look like a bump, bump nose. Um, for this one, I'm going to do kind of a rectangular shape that's gonna fit in that space right there. And what I'm gonna do is actually, before I draw out the shape I want, I'm gonna show you an easy way to make it symmetrical. I'm just gonna start with a smaller rectangle, fold it in half, and along the folded area, I'm gonna draw half of the shape I want, only half. When I cut it out and open it up, it's going to be a symmetrical shape. That means both sides are the same. I'm gonna to wanna to cut out two smaller circles for the pupils. So I'm also just gonna cut off a small rectangle. Okay, this just makes it easier, so I'm not wasting paper. If I fold this in half, right, I want two. I'm not gonna draw it, I'm just gonna cut out a circular shape. But drawing always helps. If you do that first, it always helps. But I'm just gonna cut out a circle shape, save my scraps, and now I have two. All right, where you place them in the eye is going to determine how the eyes will look, whether they're crooked, looking to the side, looking up or down, that's your decision. The next shape I'm gonna make with another black rectangle, I need a little bigger piece, so I'm gonna grab this one. I'm gonna draw my mouth shape, whatever I want it to be. This is gonna be kind of like an open mouth. It could be upside down or right side up. I can determine that later. First, I'm gonna cut it out. Save my scraps, as always, I can always use them. And now for the fun part, I can just kinda of play around and figure out where I want to put all of my shapes. And you can see how many times the face expression changes just by how I position my shapes. Right, so the lines that I call facial expression lines, those would be eyebrows, 
or the lines that would be near the cheeks. Remember, if I want two the same, I'm just going to take paper and fold it over. So when I cut out a shape, I'm automatically going to have two. All right, so now I have two facial expression lines. Let's see what they look like as eyebrows. These really help show expression. You can see how I can make something go from looking scared or worried to maybe something more concerned, maybe angry. Okay, so the positioning of your shapes is going to help figure out what type of expression are we going to be showing. I might even want to use these little lines I cut out for my cheek lines. Okay, if I don't like them as eyebrows, I can recut new ones. Maybe I'll take another big piece of black paper, cut out something a little bit bigger. Okay, I like these eyebrows a little bit more. All right, I'm still gonna have some fun playing around with my shapes before I glue anything down. All right. With my scrap white paper, I'm gonna show you a trick to cutting out a whole bunch of teeth. I'm gonna start with a long rectangle. I'm going to fold it in half and watch how many teeth are going to be cut out really quickly. All right, so I just made a whole bunch of teeth. Please take all of your scraps, any paper that you are not currently using and keep them in a nice neat pile, just like this. If you keep them like that, that's going to ensure that nothing falls in the ground or makes a mess. If very, very importantly, um, do not add glue all over your paper. Sometimes I see students taking their glue stick and just filling it all up with glue everywhere and then gluing a shape down. We don't want to do that because it's going to waste glue and it's also going to make a mess. I'm going to show you guys how to glue down very carefully and very neatly. Messy mat. I can now take one shape at a time, flip it over, put it on my messy mat, add a little bit of glue, Right, I'm not pressing down hard. I'm just gently adding glue to the edges. Pick it up and glue it down where I want it. I always start with the bigger shapes. So let's go with the mouth, right? Just around the edges. I don't need to put it in the middle. Let's do the eyes. The actual whole eye now. And sometimes it gets hard to pick these shapes up when they're really tiny. I'm going to show you a trick for the teeth because they're really small. Sometimes if I take my eraser, add just a tiny little bit of glue to the eraser, I pick it up, dip it in my glue, then I can take it and place it where I want it. Okay, you don't have to do that if you can pick the shapes up, but this is something I find is very helpful. So I'm not putting glue all over my paper, right? We don't want to do that. We just want the glue behind the shape we are gluing down. And I'm going to have some fun with these teeth, have some sticking out, have some a little crooked. All right, my glue stick, if I'm all done with it, always lower your glue before putting the lid on. So make sure you twist it down, press the glue all the way. That's not all the way. There we go. Once you hear it click, you know your glue stick is capped up and ready to be used in the future. Never leave your scissors open like that. Always close them and put them away. You will know if you glued correctly, if none of your shapes fall off. Okay, make sure your name and class code is on the back. And I can't wait to see these silly face pumpkins. Have fun with this, guys.